Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell you the truth about silver. Today is Saturday the 4th of July 2020 and we're publishing our Gold and Silver weekly update for the week ending the 3rd of July. Gold rose $7 last week from $1,771 to $1,778, having hit a high of $1,789 and a low of $1,758. So you can see a very narrow gauge between highs and lows of just $31. In sterling terms, gold finished the week at £1,427. That's down £8. And in euros, it closed at €1,580. That's up €2. So we can see that the pound actually strengthened against the dollar and the euro last week. Silver rose 34 cents from $17.80 to $18.14, having hit a high of $18.46 and a low of $17.70. Again, a, a reasonable sort of margin between high and low of 76 cents, but certainly not particularly extreme. Now, in sterling terms, silver closed at £14.49. That's up 7 pence. And in euros, it closed at 16.11 euros. That's up 20.24 euros. The gold to silver ratio fell this week from 99.5 to 1 to 97.6 to 1. Now, the Dow Jones closed on Thursday, because that was the last trading day in the States, at 25,827, up 92 points on the day and up 812 points on the week, almost reversing the previous week's decline. The S&P 500 closed at 3,130, that was up 14 points on the day and up 121 points on the week, exceeding the previous week's decline and the Nasdaq closed at 10,207 up 53 points on the day and up 450 points on the week and again exceeding the previous week's decline. Brent crude closed at $42.80. That's up $1.78. And WTI crude closed at $40.32 and that's up $1.83 on the week. Now the dollar index stands at 97.17 and that's down 0.27 points on the week. And we're seeing with the dollar index a sort of vacillation, I suppose, between sort of late 96s to mid 97s. Now, we concluded last week's update with the following words, quote, So the downside for gold could see it fall to 1720 on, and on the upside close to 1800. But if it surpasses that, it could very quickly move towards 1850 though we suspect it would take some considerable event to push it above 1800 this week. Silver has moved quite a lot this past week, again testing that $18 level at least twice, but failing to hold on to gains. Technically, we have strong support at 17 and resistance at 18, but again, still like our outlier levels of 1650 to 1850. And do not expect silver to break out of this level during the coming week. Unquote. That means outside 1650 on the downside and 1850 on the upside. Well, last week, apart from a few short term dips, gold managed to remain broadly in positive territory, attempting to test the 1800 level, but not quite managing to get there, save perhaps in the futures market momentarily. Nevertheless, its ability to remain relatively strong is indeed a positive sign, and especially as the United States dollar was little changed. Now, we're of the opinion that the 1700 level is more or less now a proven as a flaw, as there are strong signs that whenever gold starts to dip towards that level, there is evidence of buying. Now, in our video yesterday, we pointed out, though, that physical demand, such as in India, has waned considerably. But paper investment gold and COMEX deals appear to be healthy. We pointed out last week, and in the videos during the week, 
that the non-farm payrolls and the weekly jobless figures would be strong determinants for precious metal prices. While the Labour Department on Thursday reported US non-farm payrolls increased by 4.8 million in June, far better than the 2.9 million jump economists polled by the Dow Jones had been expecting, which is why we saw President Trump herald these figures from the rooftops. The national unemployment rate dropped 11.1% from 13.3% in May. However, that said, in a separate report, the Labour Department said that initial jobless claims rose by 1.42 million. This marked the 15th straight week in which initial claims remained above 1 million and actually came in higher than expected by economists. The data also showed the number of continuing claims, that is the number of people receiving unemployment benefits for consecutive weeks, rose to 19, almost 19.3 million, an increase of about 59,000. So these conflicting reports resulted really in, in the whipsawing of prices we witnessed on Thursday. And frankly, as we stated in yesterday's video, the non-farm payrolls were taken to the middle of June, thereby missing out the effect of the resurgence of COVID-19 later in the month and its effect on job growth. So our advice would be from now on, certainly short term, to look at the weekly jobless claims, which will give us a strong indication of where the economy is heading. Now, silver markets rallied last week, almost hitting our 1850 trading limit, only to fall back again. Now, in fairness, though, it has managed to maintain the $18 level, and frankly, the most likely outcome is a degree of consolidation now, with the upper end perhaps extended a little to the 19 level. So, we can foresee silver moving between 1750 to 1850, with $17 being a solid floor, and 19 being a strong level of resistance. Now, this coming week, we have some interesting data announcements for the United States. Not huge numbers, but interesting ones to take note of. So, on Monday, we have the Market Services PMI, the final ones for June, and the ISM Non-Manufacturing Index for June. Now, both of these have relevance. On Tuesday, job openings for May, and on Wednesday, consumer credit for May. That'll be an interesting one. Thursday, the important weekly jobless claims based on what we've already mentioned, and wholesale inventories for May. And on Friday, produce a price index for June. That's worthy of note because obviously it will reflect on how prices are generally performing. So watch out though, particularly for Monday, that's the Market Services PMI and the ISM Non-Manufacturing, and Thursday particularly for the weakest jobless claims. You see, the level of banking stimulus is going to ensure that precious metal prices will indeed be underpinned. This stimulus will also, for a short time, buoy equity markets. But these markets now consistently need good news announcements to maintain their current levels. Now, this may be achieved, for example, with an infrastructure spend announcement or even more stimulus being pumped into the economy. However, we suspect that if and when central banks in the US and the United Kingdom begin to call for negative rates, which they all claim is their last option, then we're of the opinion we will see a reversal, as then traders will know that the economic situation is far worse than expected or anticipated. And whilst that arguably might be good for equities, psychologically traders will then start to believe that things are not as they seem. Now we're also concerned about the dramatic rise in COVID-19 cases in a number of US states. And if this is not quelled in some way, or controlled, not necessarily cured, because there is no cure currently, then risk on assets such as equities will be penalised. And we could see a few thousand point drop in the Dow, for example, over, say, a three-day period. 
We're also suspicious of the non-farm payroll report, as, and quite rightly it doesn't, cover the end of June. But we're suspicious because it's giving potentially a false narrative. Because we believe the end of June saw a reversal in the rise of employment. And so the weekly figures now take on much more prominence. So we can therefore foresee more positives for gold and silver than negatives. Though again, please bear in mind that when global economies are threatened, there is still the tendency to head back to the US dollar. And a strong dollar has a dampening effect on, well, all commodities arguably, but particularly precious metals. But so far it has managed just about to remain in the 96 to 97 range on the index. More towards the lower side than the upper side. So next week we can see gold holding up and trying again to advance further. Silver doing the same but within the range we specified earlier. And geopol geopolitics and COVID-19 likely to play the prominent role in any major price movements, should there be any major price movements next week. We're not anticipating major jumps or major falls, but again, some whipsawing in terms of operating within the limits that we have mentioned. What do you think? Do share your thoughts. Thank you so much for listening. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel and press the bell sign so that you're notified of videos as and when they're published. Now, we haven't placed a video on the Richard and Greg channel for quite a few days. This has been partly because neither of us have managed to get together to do this. Having said that, it is envisaged that one will go up either tomorrow, being Sunday, or Monday at the very latest. We trust, meanwhile, and hope that you have an enjoyable and safe weekend, as well, of course, as a prosperous week ahead. And finally, of course, to all of our US subscribers, followers, members and friends, a happy Independence Day to each and every one of you and your families and neighbours too. We hope you have found this video interesting and informative. And if so, please give it a thumbs up and share it on social media. Please ensure that you have subscribed to our channel and press the bell sign so that you are notified of any future videos. Also kindly visit our website at IlluminatiSilver.com and if you haven't already done so, please subscribe either as a free or paying member for regular email updates and offers. Disclaimer. Illuminati Silver owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. Having now retired from these worlds, we are not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore, this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its owners.